from the Oak Wall Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, this is Jesse Oakley III, and welcome to the Oak Zone, where we provide positive words of wisdom for you, the happy people. Now, Monday through Fridays, I will share with you some positive words of wisdom through my show, The Oak Zone. But today is Sunday morning, and it is time for the Sunday morning chat series. Now, here on the Sunday morning chat series, I get to interview a plethora of positive people that are making a big difference in their community. Whether they're speakers, writers, yoga instructor, Bitcoin experts, animal rescue, volunteers, you name it, I interview these positive people that are making a big difference in our community. And for today, for today, we got ourselves a darn good show. I am impressed with a person that has a strong green thumb. If you were to look at a person's good looking garden, you will see awesome bouquets of flowers. You'll probably see some produce along the way. If you were to look at the, somebody's garden, it takes lots of work, it takes lots of effort, it takes lots of dedication to create a garden that can be grandiose to the human eye. Now I have with me a gardening expert that is here on the Sunday morning chat series and she is going to share her wisdom, her experience and how she got started with that wonderful green thumb. So please help me welcome for today's meeting, Miss Deborah Crone. Deborah, how's it going? Hey, Jesse, it's going great. I'm here in Yakima and the sun's still out. It's a lovely day and I'm so glad you invited me to be a part of your podcast. I love it. Oh, it's going to be a fantastic show. You can bet on that. And without any further delay, let's chat. <laughs> All right. All let's right. do it. All right. So first question I have for you is, how did you get your start in gardening? You know, Jesse, I thought about this question. I think it's in my DNA. I grew up in an agrarian family. My folks were pioneers up on the Columbia Basin Irrigation Project, which is a part of the state of Washington. It goes all the way from the Canadian border down through Grant County and several other counties. <clears throat> Pardon me. And we were pioneers. We broke ground out there and started farming. And my grandfather before that on my dad's side was a phenomenal flower gardener. He would grow beautiful, beautiful flowers in his little garden. And of course I have a Dutch background. And when you go to Holland, there's the whole Kokenhof, which is like 80 acres of demonstration garden. So I think it's in my DNA and that's how I got started. Fantastic. Now, could you tell the happy people out there what's actually in your garden? What, what, what can we find when we go to your garden? Okay. Well, what isn't it? It's a, mostly it's a perennial garden because I'm a lazy gardener and I don't want to be doing the same thing over and over again each year, planting annuals and then having them die and then having to go through that experience again. Although I do have some favorite annuals that I do, but one thing I don't have, and maybe that's a question coming up. I don't have any lawn in my garden. And that is so shocking to some people. It's like, you don't have any turf grass. No, I do not. For one, our property is an uneven property. We're about a half acre of a hillside and some flat ground. But we chose a long time ago that that isn't how we wanted to spend our time mowing lawn. And we didn't feel any reason to have that. So I have a lot of plants that are, that are, designed to attract parent, uh, pollinators to our garden. And pollinators, birds, bees, bats, butterflies, breezes, there's uh, you know about six major pollinators that uh, happen in a yard. And so all of my gardening choices are around what will benefit a pollinator that will benefit us going forward because Without the pollinators, we don't have certain food crops. And that's my focus there. Now, you said birds and bees, but bats? Wow, bats? Bats pollinate. You know, they get into plants and they, uh, you know, take some 
nectar and move it to someplace else. And that's all about the whole pollination thing is moving the different uh, aspects of one plant to another plant and, and stimulating that flower growth. I would never thought about bats being pollinators. My goodness, I learned something new every day and today I learned something. <laughs> and they're also beneficial because bats are flying out at night and they're eating a lot of those predatory insects that attack our yards. So they're out zooming around all night long, taking out all those little uh, nasty insects that are attacking our yard. My goodness. This is just yeah. that's fantastic. <laughs> wow. Now, when it comes to your garden that's so grandiose, what were some of the challenges that you faced in creating a garden of your magnitude? Well, I will tell you, I, I tell this story that when I first married my husband, he owned the property. And when I first moved in here, we had this love, we have a lovely view property. We go clear across our valley in Yakima. So I can see 30 miles across over, see the mountain ranges of Rainier, St. Helens and Mount Adams. But all I could see was dead plants and arborvitas and a old wood pile with a tattered blue tarp. And I just looked out there and I had a vision like, oh, I can see lusciousness happening. And so the biggest challenge was first to energize and convince my husband that there was potential for this yard and that we could transform it from an overgrown evergreen, old, old evergreen juniper tams into something different. And so the biggest challenge was the truculent workforce. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's amazing how, when you can just say, Hey, I think if we just do something. And my first thing was he didn't want to move the wood pile. And I said, you know, I think if we just do three wheelbarrow wo uh, loads a day over a weekend, you know, like three Saturday and three Sunday, I think we can get this moved in a couple months. We had it moved in a day. I mean, it was just like that. So it was just that ability to uh, motivate and uh, see the potential. And then as each project came into fruition, the energy and the enthusiasm grew within both of us for what was happening. And I think we also took it, chewed it a bit at a time. So nothing happened overnight. It was just creating a space here, creating a space there, creating a space over here. And then we would go out and we would celebrate each of those moments and enjoy that time. Fantastic. Oh my. That that put in a lot of work and a lot of effort. Whew. Now, the next question I have for you is, what were some of the best moments you experiencing when it comes to this garden? Well, some of the best moments were actually realizing that the greater community was appreciating what we were doing because unbeknownst to us, they were watching what was going on because our property happens to sit on a corner of, you know, X and Y, it's a lot of traffic and uh, people were seeing that and we were getting notice for what we were doing and transforming it. And the, the first time we had uh, about 10 years ago, maybe uh, Cisco Morris, who is a famous gardening guy out of Seattle, he comes over to Yakima and, and does some fundraisers for the Yakima Area Arboretum while well, they auctioned off our yard as one of the uh, tr uh, treats or the, one of the prizes for people to be able to enjoy. Come take a tour with Cisco of this yard. And we were just stunned that they would even want to consider that. And then my husband he retired 10 years before I did. So he would oftentimes be out walking in the yard or weeding or doing something. And somebody would just drop by and say, hey, I see you here. Can I take a tour of your yard? Because I've been driving by it and I just love it. Could you?" And so he would enjoy getting to walk people through the yard to see what we were doing. And then in 2017, we had the Yakima Area Arboretum does a fundraiser each year for their community for their fabulous arboretum that they have acres and acres of gardens here, public gardens. 
and they pick five gardens a year to do a fundraiser, which they call over the garden fans. So they allow, they sell tickets and they allow people to come into the five private gardens to just walk through and see what they've done. And so they chose us in 2017 to do that. And that video that I'd sent you was the culmination of that project. So those are some of the excitements and things that I had never anticipated when I started this project, because I just started it out of a, a need to transform deadness into liveness. And that was just the side effect of it. Wow. I tell you, when I, when I look at that video, my jaw hit the floor because what you and your husband created, you brought dead into life. That says a whole lot right there. Fantastic, beyond fantastic, and it's just beyond awesome. Now, you, you're welcome. You're welcome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if you were to meet somebody in visiting your garden, and they are about as amazed as I am, if not more, and they want to know what are the great advice and what type of words of wisdom that they want to create a garden for themselves. What advice would you give this type of person that want to do what you're doing? That is a wonderful question. And actually in my other volunteer life, which is as a master gardener, which I've been since 20, 2003, I actually give a talk about this. It's, it is about thinking about what you want to do. And for us, it was baby steps. It, I, I I remember waking my husband up at night saying, oh, I got another idea. I got another idea how we're going to do this. But I would tell people, walk around your yard and think about what you want to do with that yard and take it in baby steps. You don't, you don't take a half acre yard and transform it all at once, not unless you have a gazillion dollars and people. And we didn't have people and we didn't have a gazillion dollars. But I would say take baby steps about what you're going to do and think about it and live with it. And then also go tour everybody else's yard that you can read gardening books, research it, go to uh, edu websites, gardening websites that are college educated. They're uh, not college educated, but they're science-based websites that help you do that and draw up a small plan. But like I tell people, start small. If, if you want to do something, just consider taking out 10 feet of yard and convert that and then work on the next 10 feet, but don't take out 10,000 feet at once and expect it to happen. So think about what you wanna do. Think about what your style is. Some people want, I like my neighbor, I tried to give them some flowers one time and they said, what color are they? And I said, well, they're pink. And they said, oh, that won't work for us. Well, I was never a person that turned down a plant in my life. It was, I don't care if it was red, purple, green, or blue, it went in my yard. But if you're a kind of person that has to have a theme, think about that and how you want that to work. All right, great words of wisdom there. Now, is there any way that people can know more about the garden or what, is there any type of link that they can go to that they can be referenced to? Well, of course, there's uh, every state, I believe, almost every state in the union has a uh, master gardener program from their local colleges. Here in, here in Washington, it's WSU Master Gardeners. Oregon, it's Oregon Master Gardeners. I know almost every state has a gardening program about that. But there's many different websites out there that uh, Joe Lample has one that he, he does. I think he takes place in the South. So there's many, many gardening sites out there. I would just look into what they do. The Yakima Air Arboretum put up all the videos. Last year, they did a uh, video tour of all the gardens. And that was the other thing I was going to mention is last year, because of the pandemic, they couldn't do their over the fence fundraiser. But they decided they still wanted to do a showcase gardening in inland Washington. And so they came back to our yard and did another video of that. And that's up on YouTube on the Yakima Area Arboretum's website, awtrees.org, along with four other gardens in the Yakima 
Oklahoma area. But there's many, many gardening sites like that. And Jesse, if you want to post my Vimeo that I sent you of our 2017 garden tour, I give you permission to do that. That is fabulous. And uh, that's what I would say. Just go have fun with it. And for all the happy people out there that are watching this and miss the link information, please do not fret because the links in the description will be right below. So after you see this interview, you can check out the following links that are right below and you'll be amazed with the different plethora of gardens that are out there. All right, and we are almost at the end of this interview and it is shout out time. Now, do you have anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to at this time? Well, I, I will shout out to my husband, Ray, because he's shouldered along with me these 26 years to uh, convert this garden into this pollinator paradise that we call it. And I also give a shout out to the many coworkers when I first started back in 1995. I, I posted signs at work on coffee bars and stuff saying, I want plants, give me something, you know, and many people... I said, come to my yard, you can dig up several plants and we'll get you started. And that's how I got started. And so the Yakima Air Arboretum, the Master Gardener Program, and my husband. I tell you, those, that's a good group of people to give shout outs to. And now my question that I have for you is, there are so many happy people that are going to watch this video. And they are amazed and excited. And they, some of them want to create gardens for themselves. Now, if you can offer words of wisdom to my people, the happy people, what would those words of wisdom be? I would say have fun. Whatever you're thinking about doing, do it with joy, not with uh, sorrow or with have to attitude. You know, I got to get this done. Do it with fun. Like recently, I just started doing something new, which was the milk garden, the milk, the milk jug gallon milk jug, uh, temporary greenhouse where you start seeds that way. I've never done that before. It's just a new way of having fun. So I would just tell them you can garden in a 10 inch pot or you can garden in a quarter acre, but whatever you do, have fun with that. What a way to end this wonderful interview. And for all the happy people that are watching all over the world, I'd like to take this time out to thank you for spending time here on the Oak Zone Sunday Morning Chat Series. Jesse, thank you so much. All right. Now, this concludes this episode of the Sunday Morning Chat Series. If you want more plethora of positivity, please go to YouTube, type in my name, Jesse Oakley III, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, like and share these videos with other happy people that you know. And if you would like to check out more past episodes of the Sunday Morning Chat Series, you definitely can because there are more than 50 plus Sunday morning chat series videos with different people making a big difference in the community. And you will see people like my friend Deborah giving positive words of wisdom on any type of category that you can think of. Until then, happy people, you take care. And remember to always have a great day. Bye. Bye.